where it have been handed. Cause kids love ice cream! <laughs> It's a new day! First things first, make a forge. that I had put a shovel in one of the chests for you there, eight. What kind of shovel? Iron or steel. I'm not sure which one. Right, well, I got a scrap iron shovel to use up first, so... Okay, did they make axes separate? I don't think they did. I think it still counts as a mining tool. Good idea, me too. But I'm gonna keep uh, running, uh, I'm gonna run west from there to enter the city. I'm gonna go to the Cracker Book and start learning some recipes. I'll go with you. Did you wanna bring anything to trade the trader just in case he has cool junk? Uh, no, we don't have to worry about the junk yet. What we need to do is have a bunch of, uh, arrows. I'm gonna put just the forge down in the, uh, gun safe room and start baking some iron. Oh, uh, we should bake some clay too. Let's get a little bit of clay first, like maybe a couple hundred. Okay, I'm just gonna gather some resources around the house here, some more wood in that. Peter decided it's gonna sit here and load for a while, and I don't know why. You're off to a rocky start.
my stamina. <laughs> I was like, why is it taking me four hits to do it? Oh, my stamina's gone. <laughs> no stamina allowed. Are you saying that's one of the other minor inconveniences? Shut up. Using a scrap iron one? Or are you using just a stone axe still? So? Stone axe. It gains me construction levels. Ouch, my stamina gauge! I wonder if I have enough uh, stuff to finish my miner quest, because if I do, it gives me the uh, miner's dynamite, the TNT. That's awesome. I need one more coal. I'll be dropping my coal off here right away. I mean, just have to hit a rock a couple of times. Another house just on the other side of this rock bed, too. Ah, there we go. Plenty. <laughs> it was just regular sticks of dynamite. <gasps> it doesn't give me another pickaxe. I thought it did. Alright, baking some iron, and now we can go on an adventure! I just put some stuff away to clean some inventory slots. I should 
Build some more arrows. It's adventure time! Adventure time consisting of cutting up bodies. Bonk, bonk. I'm leveling my blunt weapon skill. Are you being blunt about it? Yeah. I'm gonna have to run back to the house for a second. Bleeding? Um, infected. Oh wait, I got two hours and two and a half hours before it. Actually, longer is two and a half hours to reach stage two. One sec. What's up? What were you shooting at? Stag.
Oh, we got another zombie. Nice shot. <laughs> And you can't beat that meat. Nope. I wonder if his life was boring. I'm, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Stop being such a fucking pig. I should have brought bandages. Are you bleeding? No. But they're always a good thing to have, right? Yeah, I didn't bring any either. West. I'm searching the. Ooh. Screw that! Even Screw that, that important. That important. Steel arrow, shotgun ammo, and a f flashlight. There's a stag over here. I'm looting his house. I got a quest for you. Okay. Let's see, where are you at? Over there. Get the stake. Nope. It's right here. Should be able to see if you look uh, directly, pretty much directly west. Fuck the mist.
Thought I heard a zombie. Wait, I should check my quest because I know I should have. Yeah, there he is right there. He exploded like a cop. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Matt was saying that the uh, you know the tourists they can do that too. Oh, okay. Did it hurt you much? Because I believe their explosion isn't as nearly as strong. No, it took me down less than twenty hit points. Wait, it probably would have even been less than that because I got hit earlier and infected. So we should see a Crackabook skyscraper. There's a Higashi Pharmaceutical, I see. I got a bandage. So there is a, a crack of book, like, just a regular building up ahead, but we'll skip that one, because if you're just exploring those buildings, you have to kind of go through all of them. All connect to each other, so they all spawn the sleepers together. Ugh. Take a left here, though. Rabbit! Careful for mines there too at the uh something just hit a army base. Over there. Oh, there's a stag over here too. by the Joe Builders.
careful that building spawns with the sleepers. Let's head over to the uh, Kraken Book building over here. Is he jumping on a board? He's jumping on a board. See the big white building up on the hill here? Okay. Found a short iron pipe. Found a fire axe and iron shovel. Alright, let's clear out the first floor. Be careful, there's the, uh, the Arbucks coffee here, but uh, there's mines in it. Okay. They're just at the doorway. I got Here's a zombie outside. Crouch when you shoot at them, you do double damage.
Okay, I got rid of the mines. Yeah, I'm just getting rid of these corpses. Hey. What's up? I was just taking out a tree. <laughs> oh, jeez. you make all these? Yep. They're all locked. Yeah, I'm not coming in a sec. I need some more wood. Oh, I got a survivor note, so that means they do exist. Which is good, because that means points are a little easier to get. Okay, so how I organize these is... Put stuff in it and you'll get it. Alright.
I put a quest in the last chat. Wait. Alright, first four clear. I believe so. Alright, let's loot everything. I'm picking up uh, plants in the uh, event that you start another man cave. Okay. We need things to look beautiful. Alright, next floor. Oh, you must be on the second floor already. Yep. This one's fairly empty. So I'm mostly just a few enemies on it. And I believe that's about it for this floor. This is the third floor where we start getting some loot! You can take the elevator down. Moving up to the third floor. Careful, there's businessmen on this floor. There are nine according to console because I'm a filthy cheater.
lights. I don't see how he didn't hear me opening the door. <laughs> I'm moving slow and kind of looting in behind you because it's too dark in the building without a headlamp or something. So I'm just using a flashlight. Wow, this toilet had a uh, pistol and some ammo. Find any good books? Leather boots. How oh, careful this floor is, that uh, will break from under you. Yeah, I saw that already. Uh, move off the cracked part.
awkward. Uh, careful, I hear a Ravager. I'm gonna stay hidden. <laughs> no, why is he shooting? Because Ravagers always have good loot. Well, usually that one didn't, it just had a pistol grip. And I want all this free experience. Were they on the ground level? Oh, they're outside. Or it's done. <laughs> okay. I have almost enough uh, survivor notes to make a pack of them. A pack is just worth five. I usually just wait till you get five because it's just less uh, clicking over and over again. Yeah.
right? So if you notice, I put some chests on the third floor. I usually, um, like, put chests on each floor because there's always more loot on a floor than can you can carry. So I just throw them in the chest, with the left side being stackables, middle being, uh, like, clothing and tools, and right side being gun parts and quest items. And quest items. Okay. I still get the echo from your mic. I'm just trying to clean up all these corpses up here. The chests are still locked, dude. Picking up all the chairs, too. found a pottery book. Uh, there'll be something in this door. I found some painting books too, but those aren't really super important. Yeah. wonder if you can find fancy turds in a fancy toilet. Heading back soon. Yeah, I'm doing that now.
classic literature. Uh, it's used for a quest. You pick up five of them for a uh, quest later. Take everything I could. Alright, I got the rest. Uh, where's home? Oh, I see. To the northeast of it. These buildings here on the left? Yeah. Where I'm at? Are the best types of buildings because there's no enemies in them and they have a gun safe. Ooh. There's another army base down the below there. So there's two of them here. You see these uh, buildings here? If you yep. look up, you can see the gun safe in them. I got no room though, so I'm not gonna yeah, stop. Yeah, no. That building there is the same one, it's got the gun safe in it. Oh, okay. I shouldn't even look at loot. So if you follow this road to the north, there's another city on the west and another city to the north with another cracker book for skyscraper. I stop and pick up a lucky rock. Lucky rock? other building next day. Actually, should have time to drop stuff off and check it out right yet. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Just killing a couple zombies that got in the way.
Yeah, <laughs> ramen noodles. The food of my people? <laughs> That's why I collected it for you. All right, go check out the other house, or are you already on your way? I'm gonna be right away. and smash the door open. It makes less noise. Sneaky smashing. Shotgun smack schematic in there. There's always a sleeper in this room here. Game stage 311. Oh jeez. Yeah, uh, gun safe rooms and, uh, once wall safes in them always have really high level enemies. Behind you, behind you. So for some reason, she broke the door down, looked at me, and then walked past me and went down towards you. <laughs> Medical book! Here a zombie. At least we already had a horde. I'm gonna find it, kill it. Found a bull. Did you found a bull? No. Nope. Bulls are fairly easy to make, but they are so useful too. It's bread. What was that little snort for? Yeah. 
thing I found was a wall oven in the random box. I mean, that happens. There goes my stamina. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, construction tools level. Yay, yeah, mining tools level. What's in the fucking box? Hunting rifle stock, shotgun, long barrel, pistol grip, and a, another hunting rifle stock. But the one of the hunting rifle stocks is like grade 246. One of these days when we get a workbench, yeah. be able to upgrade it. Alright, let's go home. So my hunting quest is to, I just finally read it, it's to kill 20 of any animal with the, the hunting rifle or the bolt action rifle. How far in are you? 10. Mine was to collect like 100 iron, nitrate, coal, lead. Oh jeez. Here's it easy. I mean, mine's pretty easy, too, when you can find animals. Need a tracking skill for you so it's easy to find them. Or it makes it so they don't they spawn more often. Should have read what I got. I wonder if it's locked. Ooh, we have a wrench already. I hope that's not too much fuel to spawn sleepers or <laughs> let's be uh, screamers. I made lamb soup with the wolf. Yeah, and then you put it over the fire and cook it and it gives you wellness. Once you eat it, let me have the bowl back so I can make a bowl of ramen. Oh, 
Oh wait, I need a bowl of water. I don't. I think. Yeah. Just used to make uh, a thing for the workbench to make paper. I have twenty minutes left. Health 13, fullness 33, hydration 5, wellness plus 1. And delicious. Yeah. In fact, nice hot stew 100%. Yeah, that just uh, increases your uh, temperature. I'll have time to see if I can go hunt some animals before... No, you don't I'm really have any more time. in time. What are you going for? for? Gathering stuff. Evil music. Upgrade the house. Do you have enough water? Oh wait. You need a bowl. I'm not hungry yet, so I can't don't wanna just waste my food. Are you at hundred percent hunger or fullness? Ninety seven. If if you eat it it does go above. Oh, I also got a safe cracker book. What's that do? You can make lockpicks so that you can open up like safes and uh, gun chests. Hmm. Once you get the steel pickaxe, though, I think the steel pickaxe is still faster. <laughs> Man, if we had paint, we could make this house look fabulous. Yeah. I'm not sure how much more how much more waste on that.
people in the chest for you. Nothing yet. I think I need a bowl of water. Yeah, you, I do. Yeah. You take the bowl and then you use the recipes and then it'll save a bowl of water. Then you take it to the fire. Oh yeah, you can use it with bottled water, that's right. Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, a bowl of ramen. <laughs> it's not really that useful because it doesn't give wellness. But, food of my people. Well, not much to do in the night time now. We can engage in fisticuffs. I'm making seeds. <laughs> Look like your character just rolled his eyes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Oh, okay, my skill in athletics is now level 15. Jeez. Oh shoot, I better take off some of my stuff here. I'm gonna watch. Alright, since there's nothing to do, let's let's tell stories about work. Ugh. Uh... Did I ever tell you the uh the, the story about the jello old lady? Oh jeez. So I, I worked at a grocery store and uh there was one time I was, you know, this uh, old lady was looking at the jello section. And I asked her if she needed help finding anything and she's just like, Yeah, I'm looking for I think it was like some weird like banana flavored jello or something that we didn't have. And I mean, I had worked there for like, I think like five or six years at the time, so I pretty much knew like where everything and every, you know, where everything yeah. was. And I was like, oh, we don't, we don't carry that flavor of Jello. And she's like, oh yeah, you do. And I was like, no, we don't. If you want, we could try to special order it for you. He's like, oh, you've always carried it. I don't know what's why it's not here. <laughs> and, and I'm just like. Oh. And I'm just like, okay, well, there's there's no spot for it anymore. It's like, well, there was a little while ago, and I just keep thinking, no, there wasn't. So she keeps on saying that, you know, we've always carried, we already carried that, you know, the, the store's always carried it. And I'm just like, you know, I just keep telling her, it's like, no, we've never carried it. And then she's like, oh well, you must be new here because obviously you don't you don't know what you're talking about. Like, and she says in a really like sarcastic, pissy voice. Yeah. So after that, she walks away, right? And I just turn around and I melt the words fuck you while giving her the double finger to her back. Right as another customer turns down the, down the aisle and looks right at me. Uh-oh. <laughs> luckily, it was luckily a customer was... that uh, frequents the store and thought it was just hilarious that I did that. <laughs> Uh, 
I got I got nothing good to say about work. Well, let's hear some shitty stories about work. I get in trouble for saying them. For saying what? <laughs> saying what? For saying them. Why do you get in trouble? You don't still work there, do you? No, it's just uh, bad stuff that would get the company shut down, so... All I have to do is not say the name of the company. Did you work for a company that obviously violated severe regulation? Oh, yeah. Ouch. Like, how badly you... <laughs> I was once asked to take a blowtorch blow to a wellhead to knock a hydrate out of it. And what would have happened if you did? There would have been a crater. Fire, wellhead. Natural gas. And what happened, what happened when you refused? I was sent home for the day. Confirmed you worked with idiots. I actually got in... Well, I didn't get in trouble, but uh, when I did... Uh, I contracted out for some, like, small sales company, and they wanted me to manipulate their, uh, their sales that made their year look better than it actually was. And when I refused to, they treated me not very kindly. <laughs> well, okay, I didn't refuse outright. I said, I'll, I'll do that if and only if you had, like you signed this waiver saying that that's what you wanted me to do. And they wouldn't. Nope, so I refused to do it. Well, so there's so many stories I had from working at retail. Because I worked in retail from the time I would have been 17 when I started, and I stopped when I was 24? 25? Truck drivers are great. They always have uh, horrible racist jokes. Lots and lots of stories, dude. So if I want, we could have the racist joke podcast for two hours. <laughs> you know what's great is the uh, the ice cream, the Nestle truck driver. Whenever he came by, we, he'd always just like hang out, and I'd just be like, you know, here, have some stuff that's damaged because we're just writing it off anyways. And then he yeah, would be like, he... have some ice cream because we're just writing it off anyways. It was amazing. There was one time he had like a whole thing of like a, a, a there was a crushed box of Hagen Dazs bars where like it's a box of six bars, but like only one of them was really damaged. But because the box had damaged, he had to write it off, so he just gave it to us. And it's like a twenty-five dollar <laughs> box of like because it's premium yeah. ice cream, it's... right? Yeah. Because he said pretty much if. Like, they, they wrote it off, but uh, if he went back to the head office, he would have been required to just throw it away. Like, literally throw it in the garbage. Waste! So, instead, in people on his driving route that he liked, he'd just say, here you go, and, you know, he'd just tell the people that, uh, when he got back, that he just threw it out at the uh, grocery stores he went to. I'm pretty sure that the management there knew what he was doing, but they didn't care because he's still getting rid of it in some way. Yeah. 
Oh, and then what I used to do is I used to like, you know, obviously we would eat some of it, right? But what I would do is whenever there are uh, kids in the store, I would always be like, oh, hey, you know, you want this chalk, you know, you want, if, you, if you're good with your, uh, you know, you're shopping with your mom. And if you, if you behave yourself, when you go up to the till, call me to the front and I'll give you ice cream. <laughs> and it worked. Because kids love ice cream. <laughs> yeah, you don't say. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's great, great when, when uh, you go up to the front of the thing and it's like, you know, I asked the mother, it's like, did he behave? Or like, did the kid behave? And it's like, the mother's like, yup. It's like, and does he deserve ice cream? And the mother's like, yup. And then I give him like a big haagen bar and the kid looks to me like I'm a god. Yeah. I mean, I would too, <laughs> even though I'm not a kid anymore. Well, I mean, that that's... That's debatable. And then, uh, of course, when we had damaged goods, we would have to, you know, write it off because we can't obviously can't sell it. But we, <laughs> but we'd always put it at like thirty to fifty percent discount, right? Depending on what it is. And then we would make this. We would have this cart with all the discount items in it. But whenever the cart was getting full, I would always like call my friends and say, "Hey, we've got this stuff. It's still good to eat. You should buy it for like a super discount." Yeah. Well, it's better than just wasting it. Yeah, because we only kept it in the cart for like a week, and then it would usually just expire. And we just have to throw it out. So whenever we had like huge damage goods, so I would just like you know, you know, thirty percent off. There you go. There were a couple of, uh, you know, like the ma not necessarily my friends, but the managers and the owners' friends that would come in, and they and uh, like yeah. once a week, and they'd take the rest of it. Where are you going? I'm trying to level my athletics. Uh, I have no idea. I was I had a train of thought and then I lost it. Bacon and eggs are delicious. You can even make a bacon and egg sandwich with bread. The only thing is, it doesn't give as much, uh, like, wellness. It gets a little bit more inefficient with wellness, but it, I think it gives you health. Oh, jeez. There are a lot more options for health in, uh, Valmod. You don't have to rely on gobbling pills and, uh, and bandages and med kits. Construction tools. Plenty of a horde, horde runs by and hears us smashing each other. They'll be like, eh, it's nothing. I'm on day two, and I've almost killed a hundred zombies. I've got seven. What are the good stories that I have? There's the There was the soccer mom one. Oh, sorry. That one was hilarious. One of the guys that I worked with in produce had, like, the worst timing for shit ever. Yeah. We had a high school, uh, like, soccer team come through. And uh, this person that I worked with was checking them out. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and at one point he calls me over, he goes, Jason, Jason, he points out one of the girls, he goes, I'd fuck her in the ass. Dang it. Followed by an excuse me? And he turns around and is like, I'm that girl's mother? <laughs> yep, he didn't check his surroundings well enough. Yeah, when I, when I worked at the grocery store, there was this uh, Chinese place just a few doors down. And they had this amazing deal. It was a buffet, but uh, their lunch deal was they give you this circular container, and if you can fill it, you pay five bucks and you can walk out with it. Huh. And that five bucks would be enough food for lunch and dinner. Awesome. So it was fucking amazing. So we'd go there often because it's such a good deal on food. And yeah. it was, you know, it's buffet food, but I mean... 
it's not horrible. No. So you know what's the best when you have the Chinese food? And, and, you know, you have it for lunch, but then you save half of it, and it sits there and it soaks up all the flavors mm -hmm. for the next few hours before you have it for dinner. So it goes from being fucking delicious to fucking delicious to the next level. <laughs> More delicious. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, we were... The guy from Produce, he was helping with uh, the grocery load at the time, so he, we, were, we were working on a uh, uh, one of those, uh, the low boys, you know, the thing with the wheels. We were working on one of those together. And uh, we're sitting there working, and he goes, where do you want to go for lunch? And I was like, uh, you know, I don't know, you want to do the Chinese for their uh, deal? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I do. He's like, it's like, god damn. And then he goes, you know, uh, the word with rhymes with dinks, but starts with a C and is racist. He goes, damn them and their cheap food. <laughs> <laughs> right when there is a Chinese guy on the other side of the low boy. Yeah, and then you know he meekly looks at the ground and you know sorry. <laughs> I don't think he ever got. I don't think he ever got reported to like the managers or the owner, but he had like the worst timing for that. What I was gonna do is gonna go through my skills again and see what the heck. I'm just walking around waiting for the night to end. Walking on my keyboard. <laughs> Dang it. What? <laughs> Noise. So here, here's another silly thing we used to do. Uh, I worked with that guy in produce on Sunday mornings. Okay. And uh, usually we would close the night before, but because... I'll, I'll just say, like, when you work, when you're young and you're working and uh, you work for, you know, just small, privately owned businesses, usually hours-wise, they don't treat you very well. No, they don't. And one of the things was, oh, you're working the 12 to 9 shift with an hour-long break, right? But when you're working the 12 to 9 shift, you're expected to stay half an hour later to do the closing, the store closing stuff. Yeah. And not get paid for it. <sighs> so what we would do is we would do the 12 to 9 and then work the next morning. But since we worked till 9.30... We'd take the first half hour off. So we'd go there, do the opening stuff, and then fuck around for half an hour. <laughs> and one of the things we always used to do is we used to make uh, breakfast. Yeah. But the way we made breakfast was silly and stupid. So when uh, we had eggs... Uh, that didn't sell very well. Like the usually, like the half dozens didn't sell as fast. Sometimes yeah. there would be some um, uh, with like two to three days left on the expiry. And once they had about uh, two days left on expiry, we actually had to pull them and wait for them to be written off. But okay. they were still good. Yeah. And th then in produce, what would happen is we would have you know vegetables that are just slightly bruised, but we're not supposed to sell them because we have to sell things that are one hundred percent one hundred percent condition. But if they're bruised, that doesn't mean they're bad. No. So what we would do 
is we uh, you know you you've seen those shrink wrapping machines where you wrap things and then it has the hot panel on it for you to seal it and it just melts it together to seal it. Yep. Well, you know it's a hot pad for a reason. That's very hot. So what we would do is we would go through the written off stuff and try to find like the trays and the stuff from the uh, aisle, like the you know like paper plates and stuff. But there'd be some for oven trays, and if we, there were oven trays, we'd take oven trays, put them on top of that to heat them up, and then use that use the shrink wrapper as an oven, as a stove stove top. That's and then, awesome. And, and then we'd take the eggs, we'd take the vegetables, and we'd make an omelette. <laughs> I mean, there are a couple times when I found uh, these, like, bowls that were written off. Well, not really bowls, but, like, these. It's the same thing. There's for stovetop things, but uh, I used those, and I filled it with water, and I boiled the water on the uh, shrink wrapper, and then I poached a couple eggs. Nice. Yeah, and then we'd take a flat panel on there, we'd take some uh, bread that's close to expire and is written off, or like a bread that had damaged packages, make some toast. Toasty. So there we go, we would have bacon and eggs for breakfast, using written off product. No cost. Alright, another story about the guy from uh, Produce. <laughs> One day, one Sunday morning, I walk in. He's in there cleaning up produce. And, uh, yep, just to be silly, he puts the broom between his legs and starts jerking it off. I laugh. Then we hear sort of an ahem, and uh, there was a customer behind me that saw the entire thing, and he's just sort of like, sorry. Or, like, he makes this meek face and just walks away. <laughs> Uh, whoops. <laughs> so there, there was this older lady that I worked with who was like the nicest woman in the world. And she had worked there for 20 some odd years before she retired. But uh, while I was working there, there was one time uh, I went up, I got called to the front to help and there was this guy who was just being an asshole. Like he came in with like this, uh, this I think it was like Imperial Margarine tub. And he's just like, this stuff is shit, it's gone bad. And he'd used like 80% of it, right? And it's like this shit's gone bad. I want uh, a full. Re I want a replacement. And he didn't yeah, just want like, want like a replacement of the same item. He wanted a full replacement of the next tier of premium margarine, which was like double the cost. And he had no receipt. So I told him no multiple times, and he just kept yelling and making a scene. And uh, you know, I was at the front, and the the woman there asked. Uh, she asked me to help a, a lady out with her groceries. But just before she had asked me, the guy called me, you know, a dumbass fucking jap. <laughs> so, like, without missing a beat, I just turn around and I'm, I'm, I'm like, sorry, I'm too busy talking to Johnny Racist here. <laughs> All right. All right. That's work that's story time. Stuff. The end of another day. It was... Blunt flip and skills. Blunt flip. <laughs> Hard work stories. Like you said, I, I, I'd share more of mine, but I'd get in lots of trouble if it ever came back, so... Did you like this video? If you did, press the like button, leave a comment, share it! Press the left button to subscribe, then press the right one to watch more 7 Days to Die.